What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space, and we've got a bit of an experimental episode for you today. Um, what we've got in front of me here is, as sort of discussed in the comments on my previous video, the auto-loading or fast reloading variant of my shotgun design. So, if I just quickly talk about how these things were made, uh, let me check that this is the correct version. Yep, there are three iterations of it, that one, that one, and then these two are the same. But yeah, inside it works sort of quite similarly to how we built the previous one. So you have a breach chamber here. The main difference with the breach chamber this time is that there is these pistons. And these pistons, if I just reverse them, clips, are housing sort of loading chambers, breaches. So when the piston is back, and this is all done via a pair of timer blocks for each piston connector combo, the timer basically reverses the piston backwards. When it's at that back position, these connectors turn on, eject ore into this tube where there is no gravity, as you can see in the bottom corner. Uh, so it will just stay there indefinitely. And then after a set number, set length of time, uh, at the moment it's running on every 15 seconds, I think, the piston will push forward and push all of the ore out into the breach chamber here. And as soon as this sensor detects anything floating in front of it, it activates all the gravity generators to fire things out the front. Uh, and what I've managed to do, the reason this is sort of an iterative design is the it's important that these chambers here don't get affected by the gravity field and so they needed to be further away from the direct generators than my first attempt allowed. So if I just go into the control panel here, show you a little bit about how it's all sort of set up. We have, as I said, a timer block for each one of those loading chambers or magazines as I've called them here and they basically both do the same thing. So they will toggle on and off the throw out just here they will reverse the piston and then they will start the next timer in the sequence uh, and the other one so this reload one with the delay on it does ex exactly the same thing uh, the piston comes first in this one because you want to reverse the piston get it out of the way of the connectors before you turn the connectors on to throw out but that's what this one is doing is pulling the piston back turning on those connectors to fill up the magazine again and then starting that timer which will fire the gun after 10 seconds so one of those for each one of those breaches. And then the sensor is relatively straightforward. We had just have gravity on and off and it's set up with just this front extent here. So it looks down the barrel and it looks for floating objects, which is stone obviously. Uh, and you've got it set up so that it only sort of turns on the grab when there is stone in this position I'm in now. So it will ignore stone that's around here. Only fires when it's in this position. Now aside from that, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. The rest of the ship is the plumbing necessary to connect all this stuff together. Um, I did make, as I said, a couple of iterations of this. This is the one where the gravity generators were too close to the magazines. So you can just see the magazine is gonna be there. And the magazine is just too close to these gravity generators. No matter how you set them up, you can't have gravity in the barrel without having gravity in the ma uh, magazine as well. And then we have this one, which has twice as many connectors, which you'd think would be amazing and therefore it would load twice as quickly. Uh, that's certainly what I thought, but in fact, if you go in here and down the barrel, I can demonstrate why this doesn't work at all. Uh, reverse this piston. These connectors fire into each other, so they have these mouths. These mouths are modelled, so let's go into my inventory, drop a welder, and I can push it into the mouth of that connector. In fact, no, I can't. It'll get fired, <laughs> fired out the front of the ship. but. Okay, the idea is basically these shoot rocks out into that and they all get stuck in the cup of this one and this one shoots them out into the cup of that one which stops both of these from working because they think they're blocked and also means that when the piston comes down the chamber it doesn't push the ore because it's not in the way. So what you could do, of course, is have a line of connectors on the top instead so they were both pointing at flat rock but it's, it's really not necessary. So that's a kind of the basic design of it. Everything else sort of inside here is, is very, very straightforward. As I said, it's just some conveyor system linking up backwards to a bunch of cargo so that you've got somewhere to store your rock. There's a couple of bits on the back for reloading uh, and putting ammo into it because of course you're gonna to want to load the thing. And then I just spent a bit of time making it look cool. To be honest, I quite like the idea of these looking a bit like, a, I don't know, V8 engine, something along those lines. But yes. As I said, this is a little bit of an experimental episode. So what I've also got here is a whole bunch of targets because it came very clear very quickly that this rock doesn't behave like you think it will. It, in fact, it, I'm pretty certain it doesn't behave like it should. 
So what I'm going to do is, uh, with a bit of editing footage, I am going to demonstrate some shots on each one of these targets, which are all laid out differently. So, And then we can see the effect of the rock hitting them and exactly what happens. And then I'm going to end up and fin finish everything with a range test so that we can test exactly how effective it is when you can't fly up and get 20 meters away from your target. So this first chest is against what is essentially spaced armor from the tank world. So we have two sheets here, some of it's light, some of it's heavy, left and right. We're going to aim down the center and then a couple of blocks behind it there is another sheet exactly the same but with airspace in between. I've already loaded the clip, it's about to fire and when it does so we can go and have a look at exactly what damage this does and potentially why. So there's the shot gone out and you can already see that something's not right about that shot. It hasn't collided with this front panel at all. Right, this is completely untouched. But if we fly around to the back, this one is completely untouched. And we can even see here, as it fires a few more rounds, the stone completely ignoring these plates, these single thickness plates. Occasionally, it will collide with it, but most of the time, you build your armor like that, or even just a single thickness, don't expect it to do anything against an ore cannon. It will do nothing at all. So for this test, we're shooting at a similar layout. So we've got on the left-hand side, we've got the light armor. On the right-hand side, we've got the heavy armor. The only difference is I've put those two layers together now. So it's a two block thick wall with heavy and light armor so that we can test sort of both components at once. Cannon's ready to fire. So as soon as the shot goes out, we can go out and have a look and see exactly what happens. And you can see again immediately that this is not behaving like that previous one did. Not in the slightest, in fact. So if we go and have a look here, the light armor has quite clearly been impacted by, ooh, I mean, no, further impacts. Yeah, the light armor is quite clearly getting impacted by the stone. The heavy armor, however, is standing up to it very well as soon as you put it into this two layer configuration. So maybe this is one potential protection method against an orcan is to ensure that you've always got things double layered like this. Now with this test, the sheet of heavy armor in, in front of us has a layer of light armor in the middle and then another sheet of heavy armor, all exactly the same size. So essentially we're sandwiching a sheet of light armor in the middle of two sheets of heavy armor. Again, the cannons are lined up ready to fire, so let's see with the shot and then go and have a look at what the results are. So again, we've clearly done damage. It's clearly not behaved like the first or like the first test and a bit more like the second test. But I know from experience that this hasn't behaved the same either. So if we go around the back, it is undamaged. So unlike that previous one, in fact, you can even see the ore just going through it still. So unlike the previous one, it's not hitting both layers. It's not destroying anything. But what happens when we remove this front layer? The light armor in the middle has been wrecked. It's somehow trapped the shots that came in and it's exploded in a way that the heavy armor hasn't. I mean, the heavy armor is all very, very, very distorted, but at the same time, it's completely stopped the shot. Of course, it's only ever gonna stop one and then after that, things are gonna go downhill quickly. But to begin with, that layer of armor almost seems to work as a trap for the shots that come out. Now, I must admit, this one's not really a test. This is more than for fun than anything else. The only way I could claim it's a test is that ship we're about to shoot at has a gravity generator on it. So it'd be interesting to see how that interferes with a bunch of ore that, of course, is only affected by gravity and no longer being affected by the gravity on my ship by the time it reaches it. So again, the shot is lined up. See what happens when it fires. And the answer is you're going to need a few more gravity generators than that. Uh, I mean, we can go and have a quick peek at the damage. I think it's pretty obvious what's happened. Uh, we have blasted in through the side and destroyed all of the internal components. Uh, the only thing left here basically are the drills at the front and one of the two refineries at the back. Everything inside has been torn open completely. So that's kind of consistent with what I said with that first test where it will ignore the first sheet of whatever it hits. It will ignore heavy armor quite happily. Just go straight through it and clip out the other side. 
So for the second to last test, this one's a bit different, and it's about defending a bit more against these. A bit like the armor methods, but using something different. So from the comments on my channel, someone suggested that you should use spherical gravity generators. Uh, obviously set to reverse, so they push away from the ship as kind of gravity shields almost. So Nasher in front of us there has a pair. Um, I, I kind of figured that two is a reasonably realistic number for something that size. I mean... What you can't be having is every ship you build has got 20 spherical gravity generators on it in order to deal with the possibility of there being an ore firing ship out there. So I've kind of kept it vaguely realistic and again I'll be very interested to see what happens with this one and whether or not... I mean I've got 20 grav gens on this ship accelerate it in the ore, there are only two on that ship to decelerate it and try and push it away, but is the fact that it's spherical enough to move the ore out of the firing line almost? So I've reversed back a bit, it's not too close up to the target, and let's see what happens when it does fire. Okay, and I would say against this at least, you're going to need more than spherical gravity generators, honestly. Um, maybe I could turn them up higher. Or maybe I could put more on there so that they are a little bit more effective, perhaps, a little bit more powerful. But I said, you're constantly going to run into this sort of potential problem of can you build everything with loads of spherical gravity generators on it to defend against this? So one last thing I'd like to demonstrate and test is this obviously is an attack craft. And if you're going to use this, then you're going to need to sort of use it from range. It's not like you're going to be able to wander up, park it 20 meters from the side of someone's base and unleash. Especially not unleash your whole clip. If you don't get shot out of the air getting down there, you're certainly going to get shot out of the air as soon as you arrive. So instead, I've decided to set this up and as you can see, we're about, I don't know, 750 meters away or so from the base down there. We've got a uh, long way from a full complement of ammunition, I will admit. We have, jump around a lot, we've got about 300,000 stone and a little bit of iron in there. So all we're going to do is we're going to get into position, we're going to line ourselves up, and we're going to fire this like it was intended. So rapid fire, base assault, and we're going to see exactly how much damage it does at this sort of range, because obviously you'd expect the damage to be mitigated quite a bit by being this far away from our target. So to start off with, we're going to get one and three, trigger those two breaches together, and then I'm going to wait about 10 seconds to trigger the other two. You do not want all firing at once, it will tear this ship apart. There's so much ore comes out, it just tears the front end off. So two and four now, that should be about enough of a split. I'll turn the UI off and we'll just aim down at the juicy parts and see what happens. So it's about 15 seconds for each round to fire, and of course once you've got them both going, it means you should have a round out about once every seven and a half. So there's our first round leaving the chamber and evidently something's happening at the far end. Uh, I don't think we need to go the whole way down there to decide that damage has been caused, but I'd be very interested to see how much damage has been caused. And this whole time, obviously, people in that base have just gone, oh my god, it's raining rock. Quick, respond, respond. So they've got now to scramble fighters, get out here and do something about me, because I'm far too far away for base defences, for example, to have been any use whatsoever. So it's now about coming out here and manually intercepting me before I wreck everything that has been built on that base. And I can tell you with a bit of certainty, this is doing a lot of damage. Uh, even though it is 750 or so meters away, that is not enough to prevent the damage that gets caused when this thing starts firing. Um, you can already see a lot of explosions going off down there. Uh, and, you know, maybe about now, they've actually responded to what's happening. And we're starting to see response shots coming back out you're probably screwed at that point. This isn't a quick ship. Uh, you're not going to escape. It is a remote controlled ship, however, so it, it doesn't need to have a pilot. It, it doesn't need to come back alive. It's the sort of ship that probably wouldn't, if I'm honest. Uh, you're sending out a massive ore cannon. You probably don't intend for it to return. It's off to do something nasty and get killed in the process. Uh, so just scoot around, really cover the base, make sure we do as much damage as possible. Probably going to be running out of ammunition some point soon. In fact, no, we have run out of ammunition. So that was the last shot just coming out of the barrel there. It looks like we've actually caused a bit of damage to ourselves as well. That can happen. Too much ore ends up in the chamber and yeah, you get that sort of effect where it's damaged the barrel enough that one of the gravity gens has been broken. But let's go down, have a peek, see exactly what the effects of that bombardment was. I can certainly see from here that there uh, is some reasonable damage dealt. Uh, let's see what it looks like up close. 
And yes. Needs to be close up? Don't think so. Don't think so. We have completely opened this structure up. Uh, I can fly straight through it out the bottom. A lot of our cargo network underneath seems to be completely missing. Uh, oh, yes, these rooms torn open, some cargo containers missing. This is all open, something's taken out the gravity. We probably don't have a reactor anymore. Well, we do, but it doesn't look like it's connected to anything. Uh, holes straight the way through the floor here as well, right the way down. How far down? Well, there's glass missing. It come out the bottom as well. Yes, come straight through and out the bottom of the platform. There's bits of rock everywhere. Anything down this end? What? You know, how, I mean, how does that even happen? Where did where did that come from? So, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found that interesting. Not really a build as much as a sort of experimentation video, but hit me up in the comments down below if you've got any thoughts, any ideas, anything to do with gravity in particular is obviously what I'm gunning away on at the moment. And on top of that, if you enjoyed, found it interesting, please hit that like button, consider subscribing, really helps me and the channel out. So thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I will catch you next time.